So I was going through some of my old stuff and I came across uh, one of the, the really great characters and PCs in the Greyhawk campaign. And I thought it'd be uh, a fun exercise to kind of go through a little bit of his history uh, as, regards, uh, as regards Greyhawk. So today we're going to talk about Abmi the Dwarf on Greyhawk Ragnar. <laughs> So, Obmi, O-B-M-I, uh, is one of the great NPCs that Gary Gygax developed. Um, we're told that he was originally on one of the levels of the original Greyhawk uh, dungeon campaign. Uh, he was in a room with some gnolls, and he had a machine that, uh, when he pointed it at a, a PC, would make that PC work backwards. So the PC thought they were walking towards Obmi, but in fact they were walking away, and it was a very frustrating thing for the for the players in the Greyhawk campaign originally. Uh, he recounts this in one of his later Dragon Magazine articles, um, and it sounds like it was a great deal of fun, and when they the PCs finally got around the machine kind of thing, you know, there were the gnolls to take care of, and then Obmi had these boots of speed, and he would just take off uh, into the dungeon and they couldn't catch him and they got really frustrated with the whole idea uh, which is sounds like it was a great deal of fun and they kept coming back to it uh, which is exactly you know the kind of thing that you really like to see uh, Gygax did bring Obmi uh, into print for the first time in Hall of the Fire Giant King where he's on level 2 uh, and he's listed as uh, the advisor to King Snur uh, and he's got, uh, you know, really high strength, high intelligence. He's got, you know, his lowest status is 16. Um, he's got the boots of speed. He's got the gauntlets of ogre power, a ring of invisibility. He's got a plus three hammer. I mean, you know, he's really decked out. Um, and he's uh, portrayed here in uh, Hall of Fire Giant King as really crafty and really sly. He will say anything. He's really slippery and oily. Uh, you know, he'll pretend to, to that he was a prince who's being held captive by the giants, and at the first opportunity, he'll betray the party. I mean, it's a whole... He, he's, he's a real great piece of work uh, when he's described in there. Um, and uh, unfortunately, at the time, when I back in the day when I first was running this as a kid, I didn't really know any of the background, and I just thought, okay, this is just another dwarf NPC. Um, and it wasn't until much later on that I realized just how f full of a character he was. Um, and Gygax brought him back yet again in the Gord the Rogue books. Uh, he becomes a great protagonist to Gord in several of the books. Um, where he and his henchman, the elf Keek, and the gnome Gleed um, are are trying to get one of the artifacts of evil that will release Tharuzdun. Um, and again, he is called Abmi the Crafty and Abmi the Wise, and uh, he's he's just really depicted as intelligent and ruthless. Um, he, he's a, he seems like he's just a wonderful NPC, and um, you know, he's not at all hesitant to sacrifice his own minions just to uh, to, to see if the uh, uh, the mission can, uh, can be accomplished. Uh, he's suspicious, um, but he's also a little vain, and you can kind of work on that. Um, but then, in the background, in the back of his mind, you kind of get the idea that he's actually seeing through the flattery and stuff. So he's just really, really well presented. Uh, he ends up um, f facing Gord directly because uh, at the end of Artifact of Evil, he gets turned into a toad <laughs> by um, by Igwilv, and then at the at the beginning of Sea of Death, uh, he's brought back. Uh, to dwarf them, and he's given a military pick, and uh, he's he's sent as a part of the contest to get the uh, the the second part of the artifact, um, or third part third part, and um, you know, and he's kind of he at one point he's you know under the thumb of Igwilv and um, Zuktmoy, and then he's but he's also uh, wants to be independent, so there's a whole lot of great stuff that they work in with him, um, and. 
and he's also a great foil for Gord because he meets Gord in Artifact of Evil, and then they meet again in Sea of uh, Sea of Death, and he obviously recognizes him, and you know he he knows something's up. So, um, all in all, he's just a really wonderful uh, NPC, and um, he's the, the kind of NPC you like to see as a recurring NPC. So I know when Gygax gives him the boots of speed and the Ring of Invisibility, it's kind of a gimmick so that he can always be the the villain that gets away to come back and plague the party later. But in this case, because he's such a well-drawn villain um, with a, a very well-defined um, uh, uh, character and and, uh, and and so forth, it's just really, really, it's the kind of guy you want to come back and plague the party because he's just so much fun. And I can see Gygax having a, a grand old time. I've used him in some of my uh, campaigns uh, to, to great effect. So, you know, if you want a, a villain that's going to come back to plague the, the party, uh, he's, he's a great choice. Uh, one thing that I remember um, reading about was... Uh, uh, Gary actually ran a, an encounter in Hamlet for his son Luke, and um, it turned out that Luke's character Melf met uh, the elf Keek in the Inn of the Welcome Wench, and it was kind. Of, and they and Gygax took that encounter as it went and put it into Artifact of Evil, uh, where they're all in the the inn at the same time and they don't realize who is who and who's working for whom. So it's just a nice little uh, way of, of, of working that in. Now we also see Avmi in one more place, which is I use the Evil, uh, which is the post wars uh, source book for uh, I use's empire uh, up in the north, and it's uh, it's really great to see that uh, Carl Sargent thought to bring him back because uh, as I say he's such a wonderful character. He's part he, uh, here and he's part of the Bone Shadow, which is kind of a group of spies and assassins that I use uses uh, you know to 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 do the dirty work so to speak, and is uh, he's here with. Uh, Gleed and Keek again, uh, among a couple other people. So it's just really see, uh, really nice to see that the uh, they carried forth the continuity like that. I, I really like that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, hit the like button. Please do subscribe. Please uh, consider hitting the Patreon or the uh, or the web store. It's all down in the uh, in the links below. So have a great day, and I will talk to you later.